Hi everybody, this is a quick walkthrough of the DOM manipulation assignment for Watts 1020, Introduction to JavaScript Programming for the Web. So this assignment gives you um, a little mini site. Uh, it's just a single page static HTML site. It's based on a bootswatch.com template called Superhero. Uh, those are open source templates. I, I recommend checking them out. You get some good ideas for how to modify bootstrap and everything from that site. Uh, this project is basically meant to help you uh, get into jQuery a little bit and experiment with some of the most common features of jQuery and then you also have a lot of room to experiment with any additional features that you find interesting as well. So we're going to move through uh, a set of basic requirements that, that pretty much breaks out into three main tasks. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is create a pseudo login effect by replacing the login form on the page with some mock user data. Um, and that's not really going to be a login, but it's just an example of how the user is going to be able to click a button and then we're going to change content on the page when the user clicks that button. We're also going to activate some view details buttons. So we have several different places on this page where there is content that is not visible when the user first hits the page. Uh, this is lengthy content that the user needs to choose to view. And the, the reason being for that, you know, you often see that in situations where people want to minimize the confusion of landing on a page or something. And so uh, there will be a, a see more, read more link or something like that once you actually get to the content and you click that and it, and it opens up and our goal here is to be able to create that view details button in a way that um, we can have one function that can handle all of the different buttons on the page. Uh, finally, um, we're going to have a little vote mockup uh, where you can click and you can vote and we're going to modify a graphical display to change as you vote so that we're showing people a graphical rendition of the information. Um, stretch goals are stretch goals. There's a lot of things that you could do to continue to improve this page. These are some ideas. Certainly if you have other ideas that uh, fit into your personal aspirations or, or goals, then you can, you can add those to the stretch requirements. Um, as long as you are activating the three main features covered in the basic requirements, then you've covered the basic requirements and where you want to take it after that, I'm really excited to see. So let's take a quick peek at, um, at what files we have in here so that we can understand what we're going to be messing with. First thing we have is an index.html file. And this index.html file is, uh, again, you know, a basic uh, boilerplate kind of file, um, actually from initializer.com, HTML5 boilerplate, so it is literally boilerplate. Um, and in here you'll notice that there's a lot of content. Um, we have some images that are linked from the image directory. And, um, and you don't really need to necessarily modify anything in the HTML file. This is really about modifying this, the JavaScript. So, um, you know, you can, you can feel free to change things if you have some ideas of fun interactivity you'd like to try or things that you'd like to try doing with the JavaScript. But otherwise, um, you know, you don't need to necessarily uh, change the index.html. But you will need to be familiar with the index.html. So that's, that's definitely important to know what's in there. Um, in your CSS, you have a main.css file, and um, right now these styles that have been added here have just been added to kind of make the page lay out in a decent way. You are free to add and modify styles as much as you want. Um, remember when you're working with third-party uh, CSS or JavaScript frameworks, you don't edit the, the files that go with the third-party tool. You don't edit bootstrap files or any other, you know, you don't edit the font awesome files or anything like that. But you do edit your own file. So this here is main.css and, and here this is for the author's custom styles. This is where all of your CSS work should be going to be included in your project. There are other CSS files that are also being included in your project, and so if you run into style conflicts or anything, you'll, you'll definitely need to resolve those. Um, likewise, in the JavaScript folder, you have, you know, in the vendor folder, you have a bunch of JavaScript that's being used. That's where your jQuery is and everything, but um, main.js is where you're going to put your own thing. And here you already have a document ready function established, so you're going to place all of your code inside of this document ready function and that function is going to automatically execute when your document is ready. And in here in the to-dos, you get a little more specific uh, breakout of how the logic would probably come together to make these different things work. So 
these comments are probably going to be more valuable to you than the requirements in the readme file in terms of actually helping you perform the work. When you do the work, um, I definitely recommend once again to, to sort of um, sketch out your solutions in the web browser. So here I'm, I'm running uh, the simple HTTP web server locally in order to serve this file out so that I can do local development. I'm editing it with sublime text and you can see my editor here. Um, but I am also uh, able to review the HTML in a way that's a little more comfortable. And I really kind of like this quite a lot because I can move over these. I can see what I've got highlighted. So here is my paragraph details. And you notice that as I twirl that down, there's a largest paragraph here. Um, but this class details is making this hidden. So I could either remove this details class and then the content would um, show again. Or I could just modify the visibility through JavaScript. And so um, that's what that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so let me see if I can put this back. There we go. I have the details restored now. So um, let me show you a little bit of what your view details function might look like as you sketch it out. And so again, I like to use the sources tab to sketch things out. And so I've already made a snippet called hopper.js and I've sketched out my view details uh, function. And I, I want to show you kind of how this works together. So the first thing, this is what we call the function signature. And this function signature is defined within an event handler, which is called an on click event handler. So what I'm saying here in to jQuery is first of all, jQuery select all of the all of the things that have the view details class on them. So I've applied the view details class to all of these buttons here that are meant to show more content. So I click them and they show more content. Um, I want to grab each one of those buttons and on on every single one I want to add an on click event handler. So when you click the button, I want that to be handled with a function that I'm going to define right here. And here I'm going to define a function. And this function, jQuery will automatically send this function the event object. So remember, an object contains a whole bunch of uh, properties and methods that can be used. And this event object is going to be super useful whenever I'm, I'm making uh, changes to the page because I want to know what was clicked on and then I want to know where is that thing that was clicked on. So if you think about this process here, I'm trying to think in an abstract way where I want to apply the same code to each of these buttons, but I only want each button to reveal the content that's sort of associated with the button. And if we look at the, at the HTML that contains these things, you'll notice that in every single situation, you have something along these lines where you have a div that is, is a container, and then you have the paragraph that is details, and then you have a paragraph that contains a link that has the class view details. So if I scroll down here to the debugging section, you'll notice that here I have a container which is the debugging div, the div with the class debugging. Inside of it, I have this stuff which shows up by default. Then I have this paragraph that has been labeled details. And then I have a paragraph with a link inside of it. And that link has a view details class on that link. So what I really want to do is say, when you click this view details class, go to the parent element of that, and then go to the parent element of that, and inside of this second parent, the grandparent element, inside of it, look for something that has the class of details. And when you find that something that has a class of details, make it visible. That's basically what we want the JavaScript to do. So if we look here, that's exactly what we're going to see. The first thing that we figure out is, what is the element that I actually clicked on? And that's stored in an attribute on the event called event.target. Then I want to know, what's the container for that target? 
that means the grandparent element, really. Because when I say container, I'm talking about what is the container for all of this content in this little section that this button is working with. And so for that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually uh, get the target element dot parent element dot parent element. I could keep on going back all the way up to the, the HTML element that contains the entire web page if I wanted to from this one target element. Um, so parent element is an attribute that points to another to the parent element object. And so if I go one parent element, that's the parent, the mother element, <laughs> and then I go the next one and that's the grandmother element. So um, so that's how that works. Then what I want to say is Okay, jQuery, grab that container and within that container find an element that has the class details on it. And then for each one of those elements that you find that has the class details, perform a function. And this function that whenever I use this each, so whenever I do a, a, a filter in jQuery where I, I try to find an element, it's always going to give me back a list of elements that matched. So then when I do, um, I'm going to need to do each in order to modify each of those elements that matched. And this each is always going to, to send the function inside of each, the index, meaning the number of that element inside of my search query. And then the element itself. And that's what I'm just calling L for brevity. So now I can very easily use jQuery to determine whether or not L is visible. And then basically I just want to toggle L to be either visible or invisible depending on its current state. I don't really need to track the current state. I, need, I just need to say if you've clicked this button and the L is visible, then make it invisible. And if you click the button and the L is not visible, then make it visible. So that leads me to this line right here, which is a conditional that just says if L, so again, I'm using the jQuery to select the L, and then jQuery has a method called is, and I can put any other CSS query in there, and the visible pseudo selector only selects things on the screen that are visible. Um, and jQuery interprets that to mean that the opacity is not zero, that the so that the height and the width are not zero also, um, and that the display is not set to hidden. So those four things are what jQuery checks. Um, if it's visible, then I just run the fade out method on it, and it will fade out. In addition, if it's visible, then I'm going to take the target element and I'm going to change, um, I'm going to fade out the content and then change the inner text to view details. So I actually just did the opposite thing of what I would want to do the first time. So again, you know, sometimes when you're making conditionals, it's easier to check for the opposite, you know, for the negative case, right? So, so if it's visible, then I'm going to fade it out and I'm going to change the inner text on the button that I've clicked or that link that I've clicked to say view details. Otherwise, if it is invisible, then I'm going to fade it in and I'm going to change the button text to say hide details. So when I run this text, let me just run this. Okay. And now I can show the buttons and you can see how they go. And it changed the text to say hide details and then was able to fold up. And that works for each of these things. If I click quotes, I get the quotes fading in. And you notice that the other things stayed hidden because I was looking inside of that grandparent container to enable things. If I just found details all across the entire page, then it would uh, open up all of the details buttons whenever I pushed anything. So if I wanted to do like a global expand, I could do that as well. And then this button changed to say hide details, but it's actually the exact same link. And it triggers the exact same function. Just when the function checks, it says, oh, it is visible, so fade it out and change the text back to view details. You notice also that this check text started out as learn details, 
when I clicked it, it changed to hide details, and then when I clicked it again, it turned back to view details. So um, this this is a pretty good function, but it's not a function that takes into account necessarily what you, the text that you initially had in the button. That would be something that you could also do on a stretch exercise if you wanted to. So that's a sort of quick explanation of how to write one part of this assignment. And again, it's much easier to do this work in the snippets in the browser and to be able to test and retest your work um, as often as possible so that you can um, keep working in a sort of a quick way. And then once you have this done, you can copy this, go back to your uh, editor, and you can paste that in here under view details. Don't forget to adjust your tabs properly. <laughs> and then it would also be very good if you added some comments in here and if you removed these comments so that you could uh, have more streamlined code that just explicitly, um, you know, outlines everything that you did. So that's it for this assignment. Good luck with it. Have a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll be making um, really cool uh, page about Grace Hopper pretty soon and you'll learn a lot about this awesome software developer named Grace Hopper who is so cool. Uh, take care. Have a blast. See you soon. Bye.